Welcome to All Things Mac, I'm your host Jim Fair. Today I'd like to talk about Apple's Time Machine backup software, which is built into OS X and doesn't cost a penny. And why I think you should use it in spite of the fact a certain YouTube channel has said some not very nice things about it. What is the value of a backup system as opposed to just dragging and dropping files manually? Well, for one thing, if you automate your backup process, then you don't have to think about it. So that reduces human error. It's human error as in, hey, I forgot to do a backup and now I've lost all my data. That kind of error. Uh, having a system can prevent that sort of problem. Yes, you need to be aware of time machines. Achilles heel, and it is this. When you fill up your backup drive, it's going to automatically delete your oldest backups to make room for new ones without asking per for permission. So that's kind of a drag, especially if you're hoping Time Machine is like an archive of all your old stuff, because eventually if you let it fill up the backup device and start deleting oldest backups, uh, you know, you only have so many weeks or months of stuff before it all just sort of falls off into oblivion and it's just gone forever. So what I recommend you do is keep an eye on the disk space on your Time Machine backup device. And when it's getting close to being full, you remove it from your system, park it in a drawer or a safety deposit box along with the cable, then it becomes an off-site backup. Okay, a redundant backup. You buy another drive, you start a new Time Machine backup, you tell Time Machine to forget the old one. Another thing you need to do is configure Time Machine to skip over unimportant files. Okay, uh, and I'm not talking about your home directory. It'll do certain things automatically, but there's no need to back up your applications and your system folder and all of those Unixy system files under the hood. So uh, if you just open Time Machine's preference pane, you click on options, and then you can click plus sign to add exclusions, and then you can say, hey, you know what? Command shift C to go to the computer view, double click on your drive, and you can say, what? I don't want to back up applications. I don't want to back up system. I don't want to back up users shared, for example. And then you save that, and it's going to remember that, and that'll save a lot of space on your backup drive, a lot of time on your backup system. And for those things that you want to have as a reinstall, say an app or something that you've dragged and dropped, you can put those somewhere else on your backup drive, you know, a folder of applications or installers, so that if it's not convenient to re-download them, if you're on a cruise ship, for example, then uh, you can reinstall them from your backup drive or from some other drive that you have. That way uh, you're not wasting a lot of time backing up stuff that doesn't really matter to you. What should matter to you is your digital life, your photos, your important files that you cannot live without. And if you want to keep these things, you need redundant backups. So couple Time Machine with Carbon Copy Cloner, or with SuperDuper. Those are two uh, software packages for the Mac only. So that's what I recommend. So for example, uh, my wife has uh, backblaze.com, which is a backup service online. It's a subscription base. It's, you know, so many dollars a year. I'll put up uh, the pricing here. And uh, it's a nice cheap way to back up her Windows machine. And it also works for Mac. Uh, you could also use other cloud solutions such as Microsoft OneDrive or Google Drive. Uh, Google Drive has a Google Sync option so you can sync up. You could use iCloud even though I'm not a big iCloud fan. You know, you could back up your desktop and documents and pictures using iCloud provided you pay Apple for the extra storage because 5 gigs default storage doesn't do anyone any good. If you turn on iCloud with the 5 gigs of storage, you're just going to see disk full messages for iCloud constantly, and that's a real pain. So iCloud is not my favorite solution. But, you know, you should have more than one backup solution. You shouldn't put all your eggs in one basket. But if you don't have any backup solution at all, Time Machine's a great start. And now that you know about its Achilles heel, you can avoid it. 
And what other things are not so good about Time Machine? Well, it doesn't create a bootable backup, but so what? You know, uh, it's not good at restoring to an older version of Mac OS. Big deal. You can still get around that with drag and drop, right? So you have a Time Machine backup. You have your newly formatted lower OS. You drag files over. Away you go. Not a big deal. So you just need to know how to get into your hidden library folder so you can make sure you get things like your bookmarks and so on, uh, which is not hard to find online. You can do the research. Um, or you can ask me, I suppose, and I will tell you about it. Maybe I'll even do a video about it, but uh, that's another topic, an advanced topic. So I highly recommend you do not dismiss Time Machine just because it has a few flaws, okay? And, uh, you know, it is far better to have a slightly flawed backup system than no backup system at all. And, um, you know, I use Time Machine as well as uh, Backblaze.com, uh, Carbon Copy Cloner. So those are my three backup solutions that I use. And I also use some drag and drop for things like drag and drop apps. So I don't have to keep downloading them over and over every time I format a system because... You know, as a Mac tech, I format my system very frequently, you know, once every two weeks on average, I would say. And, uh, you know, whether it's my desktop or my laptop, I'm constantly formatting things and testing new software. So uh, I really need to have a good backup. And again, redundancy is the key because human error can catch you. You can, you know, erase a system and say to yourself, oh my goodness, I forgot to do a backup. But if Time Machine is running, you're not going to lose more than an hour of your data. Now, of course, with a portable device like a laptop, you need to hook up to your external drive for Time Machine to be automated for it to truly do a backup. And if you fail to do that, of course, it's not going to have a current backup. So, you know, you have to modify your behavior somewhat. But again, it's, it's like flossing your teeth. If you don't do it, you know, the, the dentist drill is coming to you soon. And the same thing goes for backup. If you fail to do a backup, sooner or later you're going to lose something very important to you in terms of data, whether it be pictures, photos, video, whatever. It could be almost anything. But uh, we generate a lot more data now within this digital world that we live in than we ever did. So uh, backup is very, very important. Anyway, um, that's pretty much all I have to say about uh, Time Machine. And uh, again, redundancy is the key. Don't think Time Machine is a waste of your time. It is not. It is a valuable part of any full backup strategy on the Mac. Yes, you can replace it with something else, but please do replace it with something else before you stop using it. Okay? And, uh, you know, just because it has a few flaws doesn't mean it can't be very, very useful to the average person. That's my take on that as a Mac professional, okay? And, uh, you know, I've worked for Apple for 13 and a half years from, it was actually 13 years pretty much on the button, from September uh, 88 until August 2001. And then the commute was killing me, so I, I moved East of Toronto, I work in a higher education institution doing the same job I did at Apple, which is technical support, basically. And I take care of some servers. So I know what I'm talking about when I'm talking about backups on the Mac. And trust me when I say uh, Time Machine is certainly way better than no backup system at all. And as long as you keep in mind its limitations, you won't be surprised, okay? And you're not going to have any issues. Bootable backups, yeah, it might be good to have, and it certainly doesn't cost much. If you look at the pricing for SuperDuper, for example, I'll put up a slide here about that. Uh, it's not very expensive. Uh, Backblaze.com, uh, you know, I think I have the family plan with that. It's not very expensive either. Uh, you know, I could tell you stories that'll, you know, <laughs> that'll, uh, I could tell you lots of stories, put it this way, about folks that just didn't have a backup when it was a critical time. 
and it really messes you up, right? Um, so it's not just students and their assignments, it's, it's your digital life, okay? So it's, it's very, very important not to lose your digital life. So in the old days, we shot film and we had our negatives. If you lost a print or gave away a print, it's no big deal. You print another one from the negative. Uh, you can't do that anymore. So anyway, that's all I have to say. Thanks for watching. Fade out.